George's story has been encouraging to me in the sense of his faithfulness in spite of. When you think about all the adversity, all the, the societal burdens and oppression and marginalization that he was up under, yet he was still faithful to the Lord's commandment to go ye therefore and make disciples. It, it, it's from his direct discipleship that other churches, and not only America, but Canada, uh, are impacted because of his faithfulness to Jesus. In a period of time, really, where it would have been easy for him, and many would not have even blamed him for just kind of pulling back and not being so uh, passionate or, or, or being so um, outspoken ab uh, about Jesus, especially from this former enslaved person, he was still faithful. It is out of his passion for Jesus Christ and his love for the kingdom that he, he goes and he plants churches and he understands that he has, a, uh, he has been called to announce the kingdom of heaven, that it has come, and that uh, no matter if you are enslaved or not, that, that Jesus has come for you. And then he goes to Jamaica and even plants churches amongst the enslaved population there. It's his faithfulness in spite of his passion because of to the uttermost parts of, of the world in the sense of he is specifically raised up for such a time to preach the gospel to the marginalized and the oppressed, the ones that, uh, that the majority of, of America really weren't, weren't thinking about. The gospel frees a person. You can be in slavery, but you can come to know the Lord because the gospel is a message of freedom. I grew up as a, Southern, a black Southern Baptist in the North. That's my story. And in the midst of all of this my entire life, I had never heard about him. Wow. This was there all the time and, and just no one was telling the story. The very embodiment of the least of these. One who wouldn't have had uh, a major voice. As a matter of fact, one who would have suffered the abuse of uh, the society being enslaved. The one who didn't have any particular power, any particular uh, stage or he had no glory unto himself, but yet God just used his faithfulness uh, to do an awesome work. And uh, what that reminds us of is, no matter who you are, or where you come from, uh, if, 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 if the Lord has a calling upon your life, he will use you in spite of situations and circumstances um, for his kingdom purposes. So the story is really just really beautiful of, of the potential and the possibilities when it comes to kingdom work. Because this world looks as the Bible talks about on the outside of an individual to see whether they, uh, their words should be accepted or whether they should be put up front. But the Lord is looking at a person's heart. So uh, we really see the heart uh, of, of, of George in his desire to make disciples and to be faithful to King Jesus. George Lau has been a personal inspiration to me uh, because he puts missions on the radar. And I have someone who, who has paid the price. You, you know what I'm saying? Somebody who has um, taken his uh, five stones and sling and fought giants. Giants of slavery, giants of political corruptness, uh, giants of injustice. Um, uh, injustice against him and his family. He did that, and he used uh, George Lau as an example of that. Uh, he ran the race. He stuck in there when the going got tough. And yet, somebody said, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Well, that was George Lau, and that's an encouragement to me. You know, I, I, I have examples, as Paul said, looking unto him. And he would talk about Noah and Abraham and Rahab and Joshua, and, and the list goes on, you know. Uh, so I have that biblical example, but I also have an example of someone who looks like me, who left this country and went into missions.